after Yaakov had fallen out of Emunah, after his servitude to Laban, listen, Yahweh demanded that Yaakov enter his second chance because Yahweh was about to renew covenant again with Yaakov. Again. Look at that love. He was going to take him back to the same place and give him the same promises and renew covenant. Yeah, hello. Amen. Is anyone getting this? Amen. Renew covenant. But where was he going to renew covenant? In Padanaram? No. no. Back in Bethel. Where's Yahweh going to renew covenant with the two houses of Israel? Here in the Galut? Here in the exile? Here in the diaspora? No. Both houses will be back in the land, and the tabernacle of our father David will finally and long last be rebuilt back in Zion. Zion, Zion, Zion. Alo Tishali. Back in Zion, somebody. He's got to get us back into the land, and there, where there, when then, he will fully renew covenant with us. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Not only is Yahweh's goodness to go out and reach you in Padanaram after 21 years of running from his will, he'll bring you back to the same place. See, that's how I know some folks who left this congregation but had no business leaving. They'll come back. You know what? Not because of me. Not because of the phone. Faithful covenant. That's part of unconditional covenant. Amen? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I said, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, hold on. Do you feel like you're back in Bethel? Yes. Yes. Yahweh didn't leave you in Padan around. <laughs> you found a wife in Padan around, but you came back with your wife. Yeah. Hello. Hello. The word is applicable for today, for our life. Yes. It is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, able to divide asunder to bone and marrow, for it is in the third of the thoughts and intents of the heart, somebody. Yes. Hebrews 4.12. Every person that's supposed to be here in the Miami Beach Israel revival, if it is Yahweh's will, they may be serving Laban and taking care of his flocks and cleaning up the dung, but they'll be back. And if I'm supposed to go back to Israel and you're supposed to go back to Israel, you'll be back. Look at the covenant faithfulness. Not only does Yahweh reappear and doesn't say, and say, now Jacob, do you remember when you, Jacob, do you remember what you, Jacob, do you remember when I done told you to tithe, but you didn't done tithe? Do you remember when I told you to walk as a Hebrew and you went back to that apostate system that denies my feast and my goodness? Yes. He doesn't come to us and condemn us. Romans 8, 1, for there is therefore now, when, now, no condemnation to those who are in Messiah Yeshua. Some of us for the first time are learning what it means to be faithful to one congregation, to one set of people. When you come here, brothers and sisters, you're not just faithful to Rabbi Moshe. You are faithful to each other. You need to be here every time the door is open because your brothers and sisters need you. They are faithful to you. And Yahweh is training you and teaching you to be faithful to them, not to me, to them. What about your brothers? What about your sister? And I don't much care for the rabbi. Fine. How about Karen? How about Merle? You like Merle? Nice guy. Can't miss him. Very giving, loving person. Don't, if, if you can't come for me and you can't come for Yahweh, come for each other. Be a part of each other. Amen? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are Messiah Yeshua who walk not after the flesh but after the Ruach. You might get in the flesh in Laban's fields for 21 years, but eventually those who are led by the Ruach are the sons of Yahweh, Romans 8, 14. Those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of Yahweh. And if you're led by the Spirit, you'll eventually somewhere, somehow, sometime. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. Hear the Master's voice and say, Arise, my beloved. I didn't trade you in for a new separate entity that meets on Sunday. Arise, Jacob. Arise, Jacob. Arise, Jacob. Get back. Get back, Joe. And that's what we say to you, Ephraim. <laughs> to Jews and to Joes. <laughs> Yahweh loves Jews and Joes. Amen. And what has Yahweh's message since 1996 been? With the acceleration of the two house restoration and the messianic Israel movement that has grown leaps and bounds and exceeded messianic Judaism. What is Yahweh's message to the Jews? 
Same as to the Jews. Come on, Joe. Get back. Get back. Get, 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 get. Come on, Joe. Get back to where you once belonged. Oh, my goodness. Get back. Yeah. Get back to where you once belong. <laughs> you don't have the overhead, I'm sorry. I'll make the overhead next week. <laughs> Yahweh does just, just doesn't love Jews. He loves Jews and Joes. Doesn't matter if you're a Joe or a Jew. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So when we hear the voice of the Father, it is the voice of unconditional love. It's not the voice of, well, since you did that to me, I'm not going to answer your email. It's the voice of, arise, my love. The Shulamite woman in Shir Hashirim says, arise, my beloved, and go to the king, to the master. Hallelujah. Yes. Look who Yahweh says, hello. He says, now, <laughs> you, you didn't want to build me a house because you, 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 you were disobeying me. So here's what I want you to do, Yaakov. Take your household all who are with you, and build me an altar. I said, build me an altar. Yahweh, listen, wanted to renew covenant in the same place 21 years later. But before he can build the house of Yahweh in Bethel, what happened? Yahweh says, you have to build me an altar of cleanliness. Yaakov, remember that stone that pillow that you made into a what? A standing column and you anointed with messianic oil as a place of deliverance to remember my goodness in Bethel. Do you remember that place? Now go back there, but don't build me a house because I have to gradually move you in faithfulness. I asked you to build a house and to start tithing and build the house of Yahweh. Go get your family and come right back. Instead, you stayed there for 21 years because I had to discipline you. You weren't faithful to build my house. Now I don't really want to give you all that responsibility. Listen, so go back and build an altar. Hello? Merle, you're going to like this. We talked about this last week. Build an altar. But before you build the altar, back in Bethel, he says, Yahweh says, verse 2, put away, look, the foreign Elohim, the foreign mighty ones, who are among you. Cleanse yourselves and change your garments. Hello? Yahweh said if you want to inherit the covenant of promise back in Bethel, you're going you, to you're gonna have to get rid of the pagan, paganism. What happened to Yaakov when he stayed 21 years by being disciplined by Yahweh? What happened to him in the fields of Lavan? He picked up the worship of Yahweh plus. Turn to your neighbor and say plus. plus. I said plus. Can we get another cup of coffee? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Coffee, thank you. Plus. Thank you. He still worshiped Yahweh, but his wife had other Elohim from her father Laban's house. Amen? And listen, when we respond to Yahweh with a conditional love as opposed to unconditionally, you are destined, listen, to pick up pagan idols that you're going to have to lay on the altar of cleansing before he calls you back to do what you were supposed to do. Well, Rabbi, I don't see anything wrong with doing a little this and a little that. I don't see anything wrong with not keeping the feasts of Yahweh. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with, with calling him Señor Jesucristo instead of Yahshua. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. That's good because you're not Yahweh. That's good. I'm glad you don't. But are you and I Yahweh? No, we're not. And so when we don't obey unconditionally and immediately respond to, in, to his unconditional love. And we respond with a conditional obedience. Yeah, he says, okay, well, I haven't removed the call to build my house, but uh, I see some strange practices. I see some strange religious practices. And if you're gonna build my house, what house? The house of Israel, the 12 tribes. 
you're going to have to get rid of these foreign idols. And you know your wife? You know your girlfriend? Thank you, baby. Let me kiss. Let me on tape. There you go. Ah, that did it. That did it. Yeah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh says, the gifts and the calling of Yahweh are without repentance. So Yaakov, I'm not going to replace you with a new person and change my plan to bless the world through Israel. But what I'm going to do is make sure you're clean before I recommission you to build. Yes. Hello? Did not Nehemiah do the same thing? He said, Judah shall rebuild the walls and the temple of Jerusalem. But first they had to stop buying and selling on Shabbat. Amen. First they had to stop eating pig. First, they had to stop eating shellfish and having sea markets at the gates of the city. And when Judah is cleansed, then, when, then, they can rebuild. Listen, brothers and sisters, those of you who have received Yahweh's unconditional love, but have responded to him conditionally, you're in a period of cleansing. You understand? Yahweh hasn't changed your destiny. Yahweh hasn't changed your calling. Yahweh hasn't changed... His purpose in your life. But he is calling you to go through a period of what? Cleansing. 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 If. Turn to your neighbor and say if. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's try that again. If. Yeah. If. We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. How much? All unrighteousness. All if. So he doesn't just say, oh, you, you, I called you to be a rabbi. Go ahead. Oh, I called you to be a musician. Go ahead. No, no, no. First, it's a period of cleansing. Amen. Could Yaakov have, have escaped that period of cleansing? Yes. By responding in unconditional obedience. Amen. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Does, does Yahweh need our tootsie rolls? No. Does Yahweh need our home-baked cookies? What does Yahweh need? Our obedience. Oh, man. So Yaakov fulfills his destiny, look, look at this, but he's got to get rid of all the paganism, the religious paganism, the, the other Elohim among him and his people in order to cleanse himself and change his garments. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So look at verse, look at verse 3. Let's go to Bethel. Look at verse 4. They gave Yaakov, oh boy, don't miss this. Don't miss this now. They gave Yaakov all the pagan gods, far and mighty ones, in their hands, and Yaakov hid them under the tabernacle tree in Shechem. Here, Jacob is a type of the people of Israel, for it is where? Under the fig tree where all the paganism is buried. Hello? Who is the fig tree? Israel. I don't care if you were a Lutheran. I don't care if you were used to be a Baptist. I don't care if you used to be a Methodist. I don't care if you used to be a Muslim. It is under the tree in Jacob. What do they do to all their paganism? They gave it to Jacob. They gave it to Jacob. Who is Jacob? An Israelite who had now learned to respond to Yahweh in unconditional love, and not only was he about to bury Hallelujah. his disobedience, but he was taking the sins of all his, his companions, all of Israel, and teaching them how to bury their paganism. That's my job, brother. Hallelujah. That's my job. Hallelujah. That's your job as an Israelite. Not only to bury your pagan ways, and for a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, but to teach your Israelite brothers and sisters also. how to, that tree, point them to that tree, yeah. that fig tree in Shechem, or in your midst, and say, hey, you may not have the strength to bury these unclean practices, but before we can enter Yahweh's perfect will, You've got to cleanse yourself of these unclean practices. And I am your brother Yaakov, and I am here to show you how to do it. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to rain condemnation on you. For that is not my job. That is Yahweh's job to condemn the heathen. Right. I'm here to cleanse you. Amen. You are here to cleanse me. 
We're here to show each other a better way. Hallelujah. A better way. Amen. A better way. Amen. And that better way is in Yaakov. That better way is through Yaakov. That better way is through Yaakov, Israel. Yeshua's name is Israel. Isaiah 49, 6. Thou art my servant Israel to restore the tribes of Jacob. When Israel was a child, Hosea 11, 1, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I did call him to be my son. Hallelujah. 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 And we close with this. Our oh, brothers and sisters, I've saved the best for the close. First close. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Oh, wait a second. I have some more coffee. Uh-oh. Oh, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. The rabbi is drinking more coffee, more revelation, more power. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, the coffee's from my voice. The anointing comes from me. I don't get the anointing from the coffee. I get the voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yaakov returns from Padanaram. Go down to verse 9. He's cleansed. His people are cleansed. His house is cleansed because he has learned that he was supposed to build the house of Israel without a 21-year interval. And if you don't listen, I'm talking to you by video. If you don't respond to the truth of Messianic Israel now, Yahweh will delay that truth for future generations. And then instead of coming to Yahweh and receiving his blessings of obedience now, you'll have to go through a 21-year period of correction followed by a period of cleansing. If you know the truth, it can only set you free if you walk in that truth now. The truth cannot set you free unless you walk in it. Don't they have the same truth you and I have? What happens when a person backslides? They don't walk in the truth. Amen? Yeah, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I'm so excited this morning. We have some new Israelites that have never been to a synagogue before that are about to enter in the cleansing ministry of Jacob. He left defiled by conditional surrender to the Father. He returned as the cleansing agent for what would be the house of Jacob. Yes. And I'm happy today. I'm happier than happy. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Because there are some Israelites here for the first time who are coming into an experience and they will be cleansed of their mighty ones that they picked up in the fields of Laban. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> and then they will teach others to come back with them to Bethel to the place of first covenant renewal. There is no New Testament, brothers and sisters. Amen. No Nueva Pacto. Doctrina de Demoniacs. Amen. I, didn't even come, I didn't even come close on that one. Oh, it's good. <clears throat> it is the same Torah renewed in the heart of returning cleansed Jacob. Are you returning cleansed Jacob? Then Yahweh is ready to install the Torah in your heart and you will no longer teach your neighbor saying, no, Yahweh, for you will all know me from the least to the greatest, for I will forgive their sins ha -ha, and their iniquity. I will remember no more. We renewed. Jacob is renewed. We have the most dynamic, powerful message, the restoration of the people of Israel, not just Jews, but Jews and Jews, Jews and Jews. We've got the message, and now it's time to enter into our obedience season. Now watch this. When we come back to Bethel, but now look what happens when you're disobedient. Who did Yaakov find? Who did Yaakov find in Bethel? I'm sorry, in Padamaran. Huh? Laban. Rachel. Rachel. Now look at verse 19. Look at Genesis, Bereshus 35, 19. What happened to Rachel? Rachel died in Bethlehem right after they returned to Bethel. Because Jacob disobeyed Yahweh and responded to condition, unconditional love by conditional obedience, 
He never got to experience his wife. Wow. He came back to Bethlehem.